Hello everyone, welcome to a very special video. I'm DTM and this is a celebratory video and also a huge thank you to everyone that has helped reach 300 subscribers this past month. It's so amazing to see all the support and I'm truly truly am grateful and to hopefully give my thanks um, I will be basically recounting my journey through Fire Emblem Heroes and do sort of a barracks tour of the units I have. And I'm, again, I'm very, very grateful to everyone that has helped me reach this big milestone. I never would have thought we'd make it this far, but here we are. And I'm super excited to hopefully keep on growing and hopefully you all still enjoy and once again, I'm, again, I'm just so thankful and grateful to everyone that has supported me for, I think, half a year now. That's actually really wild to think about. Um, but yeah, this is uh, more of a celebration video, so here's, let's begin with the barracks tour. And yeah, so I guess to start off, um, I began playing Fey around late August 2019, I think. Um, Fey is uh, basically my very first gacha, so I was pretty naive. I mean, I was a Fire Emblem fan, and I did like follow the subreddit mainly for the art. <laughs> but I decided to start playing it, installed it late August, and slowly did the story to save orbs and stuff. and. I knew that at the beginning, I wanted uh, Lucina, who was my favorite character and still is. So I slowly did the story and save orbs. And when I started out, I got, um, obviously it was around CYL time. I didn't know what CIO, CYL was or what free pick he was, but I somehow got Micaiah, Veronica, and Brave Alm, which unfortunately is later down this list because I merged him up. Um, but yeah, those three I managed to get for free, somehow. Um, which was actually really good for me, because I was also a huge fan of Micaiah. And um, this team right here was my very first team that I cleared like the very early content with. Like, easy mode, story mode, you know? I have Anna, Veronica, Micaiah here, which um, hopefully I might get the form of soul. soul use the free form of soul on. And uh, a four-star Erica because I didn't have any other options back then. But yeah, they carried me through easy mode for quite a good while. And I was basically playing to save until Lucina came back, which eventually she did on her revival. And I had around 150 orbs. I spent them all and I didn't get her. So that made me really bummed out and I uninstalled the game. <laughs> so yeah, from that, uh, it was basically just uninstalled until January. I'm not entirely sure where I got Tethys. Um, obviously we have the Asters here and I did spend, I think, 100 Grails before I knew what Grails were to get Masked Marth because I thought Marth was really cool. Of course, Lucina, you know. Um, Sylvia, we'll get to Sylvia later, there's another Sylvia down the line. But we're still in my uh, not playing Faye because I got salty until around New Year's of 2020 when, you know, I was still checking out the Faye subreddit again for the art and memes, but I saw that Anna got an alt and I really wanted that. So I decided to reinstall it again, grind some orbs and tried my luck. Somehow I got Camilla for free, I think I free summoned her randomly. But yeah, I got uh, Anna and uh, Al Dual Alphonse, and Dual Alphonse was really huge for my account back then, because this was my O- Wait, why is- Oh shoot, why is you- why are you here? Get out of here. Uh, this was my OG team, um, <laughs> for uh, the early stage of my Fey life, before I had a plus 10 bike. This team would be the team that I would clear all the content with. Um, and yeah, so I kept 
playing through the story, this team carried me, and I managed to accumulate 2,000 orbs because of that until March of 2020, when um, we had uh, Brave Ike's and Brave Lucina's revival. Obviously, I was collecting some um, the free, the free five stars that they give us in Hero's Path and the story, like Air. I'm not sure how I got Roy or Hellbindi, to be perfectly honest. I can't exactly remember when I got that, but they must have been like free summons or something, because I know I didn't spend any orbs until I can Lucina. Because um, as a huge Lucina fan, I wanted to use her in a good sort of meta manner before I knew what meta was. And I saw on the subreddit that Brave Ike and Brave Lucina was supposedly some stupid powerful combo. I didn't know exactly why, I didn't know what the breath effect was back then, but as a Lucina fan, I wanted to use Brave Lucina, so I decided to use her with Brave Ike. And so with those 2000 orbs, I spent literally everything on that banner and managed to get a plus 10 Brave Ike with a free one, and a plus 8 Lucina. And then from then on, um, I had my main team mainly carry me. Um, Ike and Brave Lucina, along with Peony and Air, who's been now replaced. But yeah, those four basically carried me through every single PvE content at all. And until Lucina got to plus 10 uh, this year, um, they did all the story modes, they did all the Abyss, they did everything. And they really are an integral part of this uh, account. And so yeah, I still have fond memories of these four. Yeah, obviously I'm super proud of my Brave Ike, the, my original OG carry in AR, along with Lucina, who I still use actually in AR. But yeah, super proud of them. Air and Peony are obviously there for uh, free mythics and you kind of need to like mythics in the beginning. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Julia, I'm not entirely sure when I got her. I think it was a free summon on Krom's legendary banner. But yeah, still getting like free the free stuff and um, got some random other units that I haven't really used. Flame Emperor is nice because, uh, spoilers alert, uh, Flame Emperor is Edelgard. So, you know, as an Edelgard fan, I had to get Flame Emperor. <laughs> and Altina, oh, Altina. Um, Altina was obviously the HR winner, a Hero Rises winner back then. And she was bad back then, and she's still bad. So, <laughs> she needs a remix soon. Um, but I have to use her because, you know, I don't have any other options. Lelina, I actually wanted to build because of the death blow 10 memes. Um, I did get her refine, did get her to plus 10, and I do have death blow seal, but she hasn't actually really gotten any use, so that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, this Navar, um, it's sort of a half finish. I wanted to use him in like a sort of Air Force comp. This was like way after, but like, yeah, it didn't exactly pan out, obviously. But yeah, other than that, just got some more random summons, and then we get to Spring Lucina, who uh, back in the Spring Revival of March 2020, I wanted to get a Lucina emblem, and at the time I was still fairly casual and just collecting favorites, but it took forever to get her. I got two Spring Xanders along the way, and it probably took around 300 orbs to get uh, the Spring Lucina. It's not the worst luck, and 2 to 1 ratio isn't that bad, but again, I was still fairly new at the time, so that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But yeah, I did manage to get her, which is so, so good. And I was super happy about that. Um, and yeah, Salif I got on the free hero leads random pick. And then Elliewood I built up, I think around... Uh, early 2021 to try and make a better dark defense, but it didn't really pan out, unfortunately. 
And then we get to the star of this channel, my Lucina. Uh, this... At the time, I just wanted one copy to complete the Lucina emblem. Um, and so, when her revival came up in April of 2020, I tried to summon for OG Lucina. And I think it was relatively okay, but wasn't exactly the best. I think it was around 200 orbs. This was before uh, Sealed Falchion refined, so she became unused after I summoned her. Um, it wasn't until very recently, like May of 2021 I think, where I did a summoning stream to finally try to plus 10 her, and it was a wild ride. I had very atrocious luck in the beginning, but like very late I got a string of quick Lucina summons to save the session. And I also got male Chris along the way, which made a particular decision I made useless, but it was great fodder for her. So she replaces Air now on the main team, which, you know, feels bad, but she is basically the mascot of my channel, and still my favorite character to this day. So I'm really happy that she was able to be completed. So yeah, um, after that we got some uh, other units. This was obviously from Tempest Trials. Not exactly sure how I got Picnic Felicia, but she basically existed just for the armor training tower quests before I got uh, Fallen Edelgard. So, but now she's benched, so rip. <laughs> Zelgius isn't benched though from those armored uh, training tower quests. He's still used there. And yeah, then we get into uh, Legendary Lucina summoning. This was on Mila's legendary banner back in May of 2020. Again, this is mainly to complete the Lucina emblem, and this was absolutely terrible luck. Again. I think I must have spent like 500 orbs for a single legendary Lucina, and, and it was of course minus speed, so rip me, I guess. <laughs> Along the way, I got like Ephraim, Alm, and Leaf, and it was really bad because like I would be summoning on blues, and nothing would ever show up. And when I had no choice and summoned for colorless, like, immediately there would always be like an alm or a leaf. And yeah, it was very suffering. But I did manage to get Lucina in the end. Super, super excited for her remix. Um, hopefully it will be super powerful. I'm currently saving orbs for that remix. And I think I have pretty good fodder for her for now. Like, even this is very good. So yeah, um, after, with, after that, I had my Lucina emblem complete, and so I turned my attention to other projects, like a Makaya emblem. And so when her bridal alt came out, um, I decided to get her and complete a Makaya emblem, because again, I'm a really big fan of Makaya. And yeah, her dual skill actually came in very clutch a lot of the times when clearing like abyssal content. And she's just a very strong unit. Um, not as strong now because of dual hindrances in AR, but I still really love using her. And honestly, I just love how uh, happy <laughs> Mikhail looks in this. It, um, especially after uh, the trials and tribulations she went through in Radiant Dawn. So yeah, very happy about this. Um, and then Mirabilis, uh, by the time Mirabilis uh, got released, I was starting to take AR more seriously and slowly climb the tiers. So when this banner came out, I decided to get both Seiri and Mirabilis, um, or at least try to. Um, Seiri was mainly for close call for OG Lucina, and this was before Spurn, and <laughs> obviously Mirabilis for anima defense. And I got Seiri along the way, uh, she's in the reserve barracks right now, but um, Mirabilis uh, obviously then became a staple on my anima defense. So yeah, next is uh, Legendary Azura, and this was I think on Celeph's uh, Legendary banner in June of 2020. And I know from that banner I wanted either Azura, Legendary Krom, or another Peony, and was planning to just get one 5 star and then get out. And so yeah, the game chose Legendary Azura for me, and whenever it was water season, way back in my early AR days, she would always be there. 
And speaking of early AR defense days, <laughs> Lysithia, I think I re-summoned on a skill focus banner in July. And this was a really old staple of my AR defense. I think there are still um, videos out that I placed about my AR defense with Lysithia. But yeah, Lysithia was a super powerful unit back then and using her got me wins on defense, which was great. Corrin, um, this was a recent one I did. Well, actually no, it wasn't recent. It was... I started building him up uh, back in um, when Brave Edelgard came out, mainly for Astra season, because I wanted to use Edelgard and Corrin for Astra, and then Ike and Lucina for, um, for Light. And so, yeah, that didn't exactly turn out, but here's Corrin anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, and now we get into... Uh, Legendary Edelgard, which was the main target here. Yeah, as you can see, didn't exactly go um, amazing, but I thought it went right. This was a Hell's uh, Mythic banner in July of 2020, and as a huge Edelgard fan, I wanted to get one of her, and I managed to actually also get Thrasir, which was really good for defense as the second Anima Mythic. And I also got Fallen Corrin, which uh, I didn't exactly want. I preferred air, I think. But after that, I finally got a legendary Edelgard, and you obviously know about the 11 actions team with legendary Edelgard, Fallen Edelgard, and Brave Marianne, but even back then, she was still clearing a lot of things. I think I still have old AR videos on that. So yeah, she's honestly so fun to play. I normally run Quick and Pulse on her, but you will become she was the OG triple action unit, world. and she still holds a very special place in my heart. And honestly, the art is so amazing. I, I just love everything about this unit. Like, it's so good, and so much fun to use. And I still use her to this day. So this, uh, yeah. So at the time, this was around August of 2020, but I had no dark defense mythic. And... So even though I had two Anima Mythics, I had no Dark Defense Mythics, so I was getting really desperate. And so when the Hero Fest came out, and it was bugged, um, they announced the compensation thing, which was huge. And so I got baited, and I got Sothis within like 50 orbs, and she was bad back then, as she is now, but again, I was super desperate for any help in lift loss reduction. <laughs> um, she has her uses in bonus Sothis weeks at times, but yeah. Yeah, anyways, um, we have Micaiah here. Again, I summoned her on her revival in August of 2020, and this was mainly to complete the Micaiah emblem. I really want to build her, but I never really gotten around to it. I know she is really good, but yeah, I just never gotten around to it, I guess. Uh, maybe if I get no seed disrupt fodder, I'll use her. Yeah, Brave Edelgard. Obviously, as an Edelgard fan, she was my free pick for CYL4. And um, she doesn't really find much use for me personally. I did try her in Animus, in Astra Season, sorry. But it wasn't exactly. It didn't exactly work out um, all that well. I mean, it was fine, but. Um, I eventually I just used Bike for both seasons. <laughs> Once they like released the whole triple blessings for the rewards. But no, she's still very strong. Um, features in Edelgard Emblem Clears and all that, and obviously probably the best CYL4 unit in my opinion. So I'm really happy with her. I'm not happy with what it took to get this unit though. Um, so Hoshiden Summer Micaiah. I tried to get her back in the August of 2020 during the revival, and I had like absolutely atrocious luck, even worse than Legendary Lucina. I kept get I kept getting pity broken by Tabarn, and I have more in the reserve barracks, but like I spent 400 orbs for like two Tabarns and one Keaton before just calling it quits. 
and so I decided to just forego that. I was tempted to spend money on the Formasol. I was completely free to play back then, and technically am 99% free to play right now, but I was tempted to just Formasol it, because she was in Hall of Forms back then. But after uh, getting um, Bramimond um, and Mila in Korn's Legendary Banner, I went back to Dancer Mikai's banner, spent like another 200 orbs, but I finally, finally got her. Uh, it took like 600 orbs, it was bad, but at the very least, Mikaya Emblem was complete. And at least this Mikaya featured heavily in my uh, defense. Again, I think I still have replays in on this channel, very old replays. But yeah, she was a monster back then, being able to dance or deal huge damage to armor units. But, um, yeah. Micaiah, Dancing Micaiah took way too much to get, but I finally did it. So yeah, um, Mila unfortunately is later down the line because um, I merged her, but uh, Bramimon and Mila, again, I wanted at least uh, one more dark defense since I only had Sothis, and during Legendary Korin's uh, banner in August of 2020, um, she was sharing with Bramimon and Mila, so I decided to take the plunge. And so I got Mila first, and then Bramimon, and then goal completed, I stopped. Bramimon is obviously a super powerful unit, this is just base kit, but, you know, helps secure wins. Eldigan is obviously uh, the dancer in uh, Dark Season, so I obviously built him up. Pretty basic, um, pretty basic build. And Plumeria. Um, so just a note, from here on out, after this, I was basically in full saving mode to complete Lucina merges, and I was planning to summon on Legendary Lucina's rerun, eventually. Um, didn't exactly plan out, but I was basically not summoning on anything. But I managed to actually get Plumeria as a free summon, and which was amazing. And even though, um, I, uh, didn't summon on Legendary Lelina's banner with like Plumeria, Reagan, and Lelina share, which was amazing, and I still regret not summoning on that to this day. I managed to free summon Plumeria there too, so Plumeria is like my uh, angel of luck right now, and has made Astra Season so much better and so much more fun, in my opinion. But yeah, um, Enna, again, free units. And Mia, originally I didn't summon for her back when her banner was out, mainly due to the fact that I was salty <laughs> for not having a proper Summer Lucina alt, but uh, this double special in October um, with uh, Bridal Micaiah, this banner was too good on colorless, and I figured I might as well try to get Mia while I can, and I got another Bridal Micaiah before I got Mia. So, mission accomplished, I guess. And now she is uh, present in my AR defense in Dark Season, right now. She's not exactly the best, but she's a dual unit that's ranged, so... And I don't have dual Sigurd, so rip. <laughs> um, yeah, this is another Lucina that I managed to get along the way from, like, Pity Breaks or 4-star specials or free summons or whatever. And yeah, more Grail units, and then we go to Regan. I just got the free copy, I didn't spark another, which I now regret. Again, I was in full saving mode. But during, uh, when I was summoning for Mila and Air merges back in July, I got another copy, and then when her reran came, I sparked for her, and I got two more in addition before the spark, so now she's at plus four. This is her, um... Wings of Mercy build, but normally she has uh, this build, um, which obviously is a super powerful combination in Aether Raids. Um, and Reagan, again, is so good in Astra Season, and of, of course unlocks the extra slot, which is amazing. Yeah, really love using Reagan. Um, Paul and Julia, I got randomly from a free summon Pity Breaker, I think. <sighs> And Dual Peony uh, for, was my free pick on the anniversary that I got at random, which was so good for me, and helped with the Linja plays that I eventually made. 
Henriette here, I didn't actually use until very recently, like literally within this week. Within last week, I decided to finally promote her from level 1 to level 40 to strengthen my defense during dark. But I got her with tickets, she was collecting dust because I didn't know who I wanted to use far save with. But in the end, like literally 5 days ago, I decided to just use her. I was tempted to fodder her to Brave Edelgard when Linja was the one AHR, but thankfully I did not do that. Speaking of AHR or A Hero Rises, we got the free Linja that was given to everyone, and she, super strong unit, love her for Linja Force plays, and still use her to this day. Lilith I got from a random free summon, which was great for joint drive attack fodder, but also for her weapon effect, which um, is very unique to her and helps support that sort of thing. Lunge is to help trap units, obviously. And yeah, on the actual A Hero Rises banner itself, I wanted to spark for Saros because, again, uh, during this time, I was actually taking Aether Raids very, very seriously, and so I wanted Saros. And so I decided to spark for both uh, blue and colorless because I didn't mind getting another Linja copy or potentially Corrin, and I wanted a uh, Saros, so it was cheaper that way. I got Linja, so now I have a Linja for both seasons, and I got Saros, who is pretty much base kit. Um, next we have uh, Edelgard, OG Edelgard. At the time, the last remaining Edelgard alt that I did not have, and so after I spent my orbs on A Hero Rises, I went to her revival that was going on at the time, and I actually managed to get her in like 50 orbs, which was amazing. I have literally zero use for her, even in my Edelgard Emblem clears, she's mainly a drive support unit. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully she gets a good refine in like 2 years or something. Oh yeah, female Chris. Remember when I talked about OG Lucina summoning and getting M. Chris making a decision I made useless? Well, this was it. Uh, there was the Spurn banner going on at the time. No, not not Spurn, not Spurn banner, but the um, rerun for um, the Chris banner. And so I decided to summon on it to get either male or female Chris for Spurn, and I managed to get female Chris, who eventually did not get used because I summoned male Chris when going for merges on Lucina. So now I just have random spurn fodder. Oh yeah, Sylvia here. As I mentioned, I built up two Sylvias, one up here and one down here. Um, these were mainly to try and figure out an Air Force back in the day, an Air Force team. Didn't exactly pan out, but Sylvia still found use as an extra dancer on some of my AR matches, so at least I found good use for her. And yeah, this was the Alm I was talking about. This is not the kit I ran back then, but this is the defense build. But yeah, Alm plus Brave Micaiah plus uh, Veronica was my OG team. My OG team feels so good. I have so much fond memories and I still love them to this day. And Morgan and Fallen Edelgard. So, I remember uh, the moment when I decided to record my reaction to the banner. It was my first time ever doing like a banner reaction, and I decided to just do it because I figured it might be good content. I didn't expect Morgan from the future past to be there. I love future past so much. It is my favorite part of Fire Emblem, like, ever. And so, I was so ecstatic, and I was so glad I was recording it. So obviously I had to get her. So, I also wanted Edelgard, of course, because, I mean, look at this. This is so good. And look at this art, you know? So amazing. So, I, uh, I decided to summon on both green and colorless, and I managed to get Morgan along the way. And so I sparked for Edelgard, and the rest is history. Edelgard is now literally the most used unit on my account. <laughs> She's just really good at aggressive plays. Just don't try to tame with her. And yeah, 
after that, I was basically on full saving mode again. Um, I already summoned for Lucina, um, and so I didn't really have any other goals besides another legendary Lucina merch project. Um, obviously, I had to spark not because at the time, well, when I obviously uh, I was uh, taking Aether Rates very seriously with a channel now and making content about it, so I had to get not. Didn't get anything else, which is unfortunate, besides this Luthier, 5 star Luthier. You'll love to see it. But yeah, other than that, oh, yes, this. This was, um, uh, which banner was this? This was Oler's mythic banner, and it had a share with Air and Mila, which is great for getting light mythic merges. And so I decided to summon on that banner, not for Oler, but for Colorless. And this that was the most wild session, honestly. Not only was I having like internet issues, so like the stream would cut off, but I happened to get nine Millas, but zero air copies, which is a huge variance. I also happened to get a Sigurd and a Regan merge, but at the very least, I got a good amount of like mythic merges, so overall, I'm relatively happy about that. Really dislike Luis, though, showing up and ruining the fun. Also got an extra Seros, I guess, but nice, whatever. And yeah, um, other than that, like, these are basically the final four units I have built up. Um, Idune, I got randomly for free. On a free summon, she doesn't really see much use besides an armor march bot for my fallen Edelgard. I think I only used her twice ever. And Grima, again, is the same thing, except hopefully for a different season. And for CYL5, um, I managed to get Erica on a free summon, and I chose Marianne as uh, my free pick. And these two have become staples in my team. And I still love him to this day. This should have Moonbow, I think, um, as part of the skills. I didn't build their skill sets, oh well. <laughs> and yeah, Marianne would have Flashing Blade here. But yeah, they are so great and so fun additions to my team. And I'm super glad that I managed to get both of them. But yeah, all the rest are random units. Um, Obviously, there are some more that I have in my reserves. Uh, there are these five-star units. Hello, Spring Xander. Lovely to see you. The additional Micaiah that I mentioned. Um, these are basically units I'm not exactly sure I have a plan yet. But who knows, maybe they will see some use. Either as feathers or fodder. <laughs> but yeah, I just that's it for this video. I just wanted to, again, explore my journey in Fae through a barracks showcase and again to celebrate reaching 300 subscribers and to thank all of you so 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 much for all the support for liking the videos subscribing hitting the bell all that jazz it truly truly does mean a lot I read every single comment and I try to respond to every single one of them and the amount of love and gratefulness and support that ha I have received for this has been amazing and I'm truly thankful for everyone. And hopefully we get to continue, we can continue this growth as we grow bigger. And hopefully you all still enjoyed this video, these videos, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you all so much and hope you all have an amazing rest of the day. Thank you all.